uh, quite a bit of uncertainty in the last quarter in the global macro story. How did that uh, splash through into operating conditions for you? Uh, we think Qatar is one of the strongest economies in the Middle East. And um, whilst uh, the overall risk perceptions might have changed for the region, Qatar remains well regarded by overseas investors. So we didn't see a very great impact on our operating environment or our uh, business from the uncertainty. And uh, we believe that uh, we have a very strong franchise which allows us to go through any uh, volatility that may occur in the region. So where does that leave you with the lower rates that we're seeing from central banks around the world that's feeding through into the Gulf? Uh, arguably, that makes it a lot more challenging, doesn't it? Uh, I Actually, we found that uh, we're using the low rate environment to manage our uh, cost of funds quite aggressively. So we've seen uh, some good repricing opportunities for some of our capital market issuances, uh, both internationally. So uh, last year we did a Swiss bond issuance, which uh, was uh, printed at a very attractive yield, and we we're one of the largest issuers in the Swiss bond market. And similarly, you can see that our net interest margin has actually grown from 2.1% to 2.5% during the year. So that's a combination of managing our uh, loan yields, the downward path, we managed to hold that, and at the same time managing our cost of funds, uh, which has actually benefited us overall. So we've actually seen a positive benefit from the low rate environment. What about the bank's loans to the construction and real estate sector? Because I look at your bank, I look at your peers, and the reality is that you have more exposure than some of uh, the other names in the industry. Have you changed at all how you approach that, given the uh, recent weakness that we've seen? Uh, absolutely. Um, three years ago, we started our five-year strategy, and one of our core focus areas was our real estate exposure. We were at 28% than in our loan book versus 16% as the overall economy figure for real estate. So we said we have to bring that down. So today we are down to 21%. So we've had a steady downward movement in our real estate exposure. And we've been managing that part of our portfolio quite, uh, uh, I'd say, quite uh, carefully. Uh, so uh, I'm happy we're on track. And our aim is to get it to the sort of overall economy levels of 16%, which will happen over the next two to three years as per our strategy. The wave of bank consolidation, Joseph, just continues to accelerate across the Gulf. Uh, last time we spoke, you made it clear that in an M&A scenario, you'd ideally like to be the acquirer and that you be in control of the transaction. Have you made any progress at all? Are you talking to anybody? Uh, look, very frankly, um, uh, consolidation is not in our strategic plan. We are focusing on organic growth. If anything happens in Qatar, which we've just seen one merger between Barwa and um, IBQ, I think that needs a meeting of minds, a meeting on valuations, etc. So for us, if and when something happens, we are just trying to strengthen our balance sheet, our earnings stream, so that we are a consolidator rather than a consolidatee. But it's currently not in our organic, uh, or it's not in our strategic plan. We'll see if something turns up, we'll make sure that we are in a strong position whenever those discussions do happen. Now, it might not be in your plan, but as you look at the industry in Qatar, would you say that consolidation is needed? And if so, is it needed, needed urgently? I would say that consolidation is definitely good for the overall banking industry. We have quite a number of banks in Qatar. so. Um, if consolidation happens, it's good for the industry, strengthens it, and it's also good for the consumer. Uh, the challenge is, as I said earlier, is getting a meeting of minds on valuations, um, because usually a consolidation will happen if a bank is either very weak or in trouble, or for strategic reasons of clients and, um, or, or geography. N none of the Qatari banks are really in any serious trouble, so I don't see that happening. Therefore, you have strong banks trying to do a merger. It'll be uh, challenges around valuations and getting everyone to agree whose value is at what and what's the swap ratio. So I think that will be quite a big burden because there's no pressure really at an individual bank level to consolidate. What about in some of the surrounding countries? You have a stake in the National Bank of Oman. We had a leadership transition uh, just about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what's the future of the stake going to be? What do you want to do there? 
Well, we are long-term investors and we've said earlier that strategically Oman and Turkey are two of the geographies that we believe are very important for the long-term future of the region and for Qatar. So uh, we are the largest shareholder in National Bank of Oman and um, that's the third largest bank there and obviously it's something that we believe is a good position and we would like to continue to see National Bank of Oman grow its market share and grow its uh, financial strength. Last year there was a proposal for a merger with Bank Dofar. But as I said earlier, uh, a merger has to be beneficial for the bank and we did not think that that was um, uh, appropriate for National Bank of Oman at that time and those discussions were discontinued but we remain open to any consolidation discussions in, discussions in Oman because we believe that um, that's a market which uh, National Bank of Oman would benefit from in a consolidation. It's in a strong position, it has the capital so any discussions would uh, be something which we would do from a position of strength. To what extent have you factored in a potential rapprochement between Qatar and, and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates after the standoff that has now lasted probably more than a lot of investors would have liked it to? The reality is all of the three countries uh, w which are at the very forefront of the of the conflict uh, need the integration and the capital and the confidence. Are, are you are you optimistic at all that progress can be made? Well, you're absolutely right. It would be to the benefit of all the parties involved. But the way we're looking at it, we're planning for the worst and hoping for the best. So if something happens, that's great. Like I said, it's good for uh, both all the economies and international investor sentiment towards the region. But we're planning for it continuing. So if it happens, it's great. We have upside, but we're not factoring that into our current plans.